at the London School of Economics for Growth Week 2013, organised by the International Growth Centre. And I'm talking to Trevor Manuel, who is a long-serving senior minister in the South African government. There's, all, there's lots of talk now about Africa rising. There's, it's, there's a very, very strong buzz around the world in the, in the prospects for the, for the continent. I, I imagine you, take, you share that optimistic view. Could you give us a, a flavour for what the, what the sort of upsides and downsides of that are? Look, the upsides are there. You've got a decade. It's not just been a decade of strong commodity prices. It's been a decade of very significant policy changes, strengthening of governance frameworks, much stronger platform on which to, to, to take issues forward. That for us is a big strength. A world that is still grappling uh, five years after, after the collapse of Lehman uh, creates opportunities uh, in, in countries where, where the issues have been very different and I think that, that the upside is incredibly strong. Uh, the, the fact that Africa can supply into niches in the world, food, natural resources, etc., because it isn't quite affected in, in the same way. The fact that we have a very young population and demographers suggest that by 2050 uh, our working age population would be larger than that of China. All of those are big, big pluses. The downside is that we are a continent of about a billion people, but we are separated into 54 different countries. Each country has its own rules, uh, uh, emphasis on sovereignty. Um, and uh, uh, the, I think it's that, that compartmentalization into the 54 nation states that, that seems to be the biggest impediment to the great promise that Africa now presents. Can we, can we turn to the, the role of research? As you know, the International Growth Centre is all about trying to take frontier research and, and use it uh, to inform policy discussions in, in uh, countries in Africa and South Asia. Can you give us your perspective on, on the role of research in policy? Well, there's so much that we need to, to get through. Um, and unfortunately, uh, the Growth Centre is looking at, at, at some of the main areas. Public policy, uh, which, in, which ranges from, from choices uh, in, in what gets funded, how, uh, uh, and, and all of the, the domain of public finance, I think, is one of the areas that, that a lot of good work is being done here. Similarly, on the other side uh, of the balance sheet, uh, better revenue collection, better tax policy is a fundamentally important part of that ensuring that, that governments are not only taking the decisions but communicating the decisions is a third uh, part of, of the public uh, policy issues. And then ensuring that, that public representatives uh, in legislatures can receive the information, uh, oversee and hold governments accountable uh, is, is another part of it. The second part of it is understanding firms in Africa. It's, it's completely under-researched because there's been so much reliance on on anecdotes. So better databases, uh, better learning, uh, and, and I think we will, we will soon realize that there's actually a lot more than meets the eye. People look at China and they say, we can't compete. Uh, yet we're seeing that, that some parts of what China did a long time ago, including clothing and textiles, um, uh, is, now, is now unaffordable in China, a lot more affordable in parts of Africa, if we can get the infrastructure in place. You can't run a textile mill unless you've got uh, reliable electricity, well-priced uh, and available. Getting, getting the alignment between the firm and the kind of infrastructure that supports a firm uh, is, is, is going to be uh, fundamentally important. I think that the city's work is also something that we need to, to do a lot more on. Um, I'm glad that that spurred on. And then there's, there's natural resource management. What do we do with our resources? Do we sell it off to, to the highest bidder? Uh, that big anti-corruption campaign to ensure that the benefits of natural resources are uh, put to public use rather than, than accumulated uh, uh, surreptitiously by elites in countries is a big part of of, of, of the systemic change that, that we must uh, work for uh, and, and the accountability uh, that, that, that undergirds that, that change uh, is going to be another important part of it. Finally, energy. Energy is a big, big challenge. I mean, you know, um, in 1963, uh, Kwame Nkrumah spoke about 
how much water there's available for energy on the African continent. It still remains largely untapped. Hydropower remains largely untapped with all of the resources available in our riverine systems. Uh, so, you know, we, we don't have to repeat all of the mistakes that South Africa has made in respect of coal and so on. It's possible to take uh, much cleaner forms of energy and also given uh, climatic advantage to use uh, renewables differently on the continent. But the energy equation is going to be fundamentally important to driving the change uh, over the next one. Well, one of the, the important issues in terms of changing policy and using policy, uh, using research to inform policy, uh, surrounds how, how the public think about it. And what, what the sort of whether, whether the public are well informed about the choices that are being made by policymakers and the, and the, and the, the, the advice that's being given them by researchers. Can you give us a feel for what countries might do to create a more informed public debate about these key issues that you've outlined? Look, I think it varies in, in countries. I, I know that some countries are doing very well in just general communication. Uh, using media like, like radio uh, very creatively. However, uh, having said that, uh, there's, still, there's still pretty poor communication about policy options. Uh, I think that, that um, whereas it's possible to identify uh, pockets of exceedingly good uh, performance uh, uh, of new media, uh, there's also uh, too much mediocre media in, uh, and, and, and that, that worries me. Because uh, unless we can communicate to people, remove the threat, allow for an open exchange about policy choices being made, um, policy remains in, in, in the realm of mystique. And I think that that weakens democracies. We've got to ensure that our policies are, are discussed openly. Uh, we've got to uh, try and prevent these, these, these strongly polarized debates that, 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 that occur in some places. Uh, strengthen the middle so that uh, we can shift the discourse in countries. I think it's fundamentally important that, that the discussion of policy uh, take on a very new uh, uh, and exciting uh, character. Trevor Manuel, thank you very much. Thank you.